deified. The clans tell tales of him. Few know the truth. He was mortal once, as were we all. However, his contempt for humanity drove him to create me and my brethren. I am Razael, firstborn of his lieutenants. I stood with Cain and my brethren at the dawn of the Empire. I have served him a millennium. Over time, we became less human and more divine. Cain would enter the state of change and emerge with a new gift. Some years after the Master, our evolution would follow. Until I had the honor of surpassing my lord. Transgression. I earned a new kind of reward. There was only one possible outcome. I, Razio, was to suffer the fate of traitors and weaklings, to burn forever in the bowels of the Lake of the Dead. Cast him in. Tumbling, burning with white-hot fire, I plunged into the depths of the abyss. Unspeakable pain, relentless agony. Time ceased to exist. Only this torture and a deepening hatred of the hypocrisy that damned me to this hell. An eternity passed, and my torment receded bringing me back from the precipice of madness. The descent had destroyed me, and yet I lived. pitiful form is this that I have come to inhabit. Death would be a release next to this travesty. You did not survive the Abyss, Raziel. I have only spared you from total dissolution. I would choose oblivion over this existence. The choice is not yours. I am destroyed. You are reborn. The birth of one of Cain's abominations traps the essence of life. It is this soul that animates the corpse you lived in. And that, Raziel, is the demise of Nazgoth. There is no balance. The souls of the dead remain trapped. I cannot spin them in the wheel of fate. They cannot complete their destinies. Redeem yourself, or if you prefer, avenge yourself. Settle your dispute with Cain, destroy him and your brethren. Free their souls and let the wheel of fate churn again. Use your hatred to weave their souls. I can make it possible. 
become my soul reaver, my angel of death. Space, laying a path across great spans. The old hunger has left me. I have no desire for blood. You are changed. Your bloodthirst is replaced by a deeper need. You have become a devourer of souls. To sustain your strength, you must hunt the lost spirits of the underworld and consume the souls of your enemies. not without purpose. Take hold of them as you leap, and they will carry you across this chasm. What scabrous wretches are these? Sua, the scavengers of the underworld. Their feral hunger has claimed countless souls, spirits who now shall never find their rest. <laughs> realms. With their aid, you may gather matter and will yourself to become manifest in the physical world. This is taxing, however. Your strength must first be fully restored. You require no conduit to return to this plane. You may abandon your physical body at any time. Sustain your strength to prolong your manifestation in the physical world. If you fail to feed or absorb too many wounds, this fragile matter will dissolve. You are young yet, Raziel. You still retain many of your vampiric weaknesses. Immersion in water, while not fatal, will dissolve your physical body, forcing your return to the spirit world. Be aware that in the spectral realm, water has neither heft nor lift. It stands as thin as air. Recognize. 
recognize them? They are the children of your brother, Uma. That's impossible. These foul, scuttling beasts could not be kin of our high blood? Do you suppose that time stood still for you, Raziel? Much has changed since you passed from the world of men. I knew my opponent's weaknesses, having suffered them myself. Physical wounds are fleeting. A vampire's immortal flesh begins to close as soon as it is cleaved. Vampires need only fear those wounds that impale or inflame. Water scorches like acid, and fledglings are devastated by sunlight's touch. I would have to modify my tactics to suit my foes. <laughs> soul fades swiftly into the spectral realm. Draw it in quickly, Raziel, or you will be compelled to follow. Physical prowess surpasses what you knew in life. Even massive obstacles can be moved effortlessly. Sanctuary of the clans reduced to ruin. Beyond these walls lay the pillars of Nosgoth, the seat of Cain's empire. How humble it now appeared, collapsing into the dust of its former magnificence. And yet, I had only just emerged. In the instant between my execution and resurrection, centuries had apparently passed. This world is wrecked with cataclysms. The Earth strains to shrug off the pestilence of Cain's parasitic empire. The fate of this world was preordained in an instant by a solitary man. Unwilling to martyr himself to restore Nosgoth's balance, Cain condemned the world to the decay you see. In that moment, the unraveling began. Now it is nearly played out. Nosgoth teeters on the brink of collapse. Its fragile balance cannot hold. This, at least, had remained constant. The endlessly swirling vortex of the abyss. My tomb and the womb of my rebirth. Though much of Nosgoth's landscape had changed, these cliffs gave me my bearings. My clan territory was to the west. I was anxious to see how my descendants had fared during the centuries of my absence. <laughs> Utter desolation. My once proud kin wiped from this world like excrement from a boot. I knew the hand that wrought this deed. I didn't recognize these flayed racks of flesh. Their scent was vampiric. They gnawed upon their victim's carcass like dogs. 
This charnel house bore the unmistakable marks of Melchior's clan. To what depths had our dynasty plummeted if these ghouls were the descendants of my high-born brother? Were they so debased as to recruit fledglings from the desiccated corpses here interred? My brother Melchior was made last, and therefore received the poorest portion of Cain's gift. Although immortal, his soul could not sustain the flesh, which retained much of its previous human frailty. The weakness, it seemed, was passed on to his offspring. Their fragile skins barely contained the underlying decay. Beware, Raziel. These wraiths are vampire spirits, fettered too long in the spectral realm. When their vampire natures adapt to this plane, they become eaters of souls. Do not allow these spirits to re-inhabit their corpses. Show yourself, creature! Do you not recognize me, brother? Am I so changed? Melchia? Yes, brother. You should have stayed where the Master sent you, Raziel. You will find Nosgoth less pleasant than you remember. What has become of my clan? Answer me, little brother, or I will beat an answer from your horrid lips. Everyone is afraid, sibling. You awake to a world of fear. These times of change are so... unsettling. Do you think I feel no revulsion for this form? Do you believe for a moment that our Lord would risk his empire upon an upstart inheritance. Enough riddles. What are you saying? You are the last to die. Tell me, Melchia, where can I find Cain? The Master is beyond your reach, Raziel. He makes himself known when he sees fit, not when commanded. Used to this. A ghoul, a fratricide, 
Elevated, Raziel, not reduced. Consuming Melchiah's soul has endowed you with a new gift. Insubstantial barriers such as these are no impediment to you in the Spectral Realm. Will yourself to pass through, and you shall. Raziel. Cain! The Abyss has been unkind. I am your creation, Cain. Now, as before, you criticize your own work. What have you done with my clan, degenerate? You have no right. What I have made, I can also destroy, child. Damn you, Cain! You are not God! This act of genocide is unconscionable! Conscience? You dare to speak to me of conscience? Only when you have felt the full gravity of choice should you dare question my judgment. Your life span is a flicker compared to the mass of doubt and regret that I have borne since Mortanius first turned me from the light. To know that the fate of the world hangs dependent on the advisedness of my every deed, can you even begin to conceive what action you would take in my position? I would choose integrity, Cain. <laughs> Look around you, Raziel. See what has become of our empire. Witness the end of an age. The clans scattered to the corners of Nosgoth. This place has outlasted its usefulness. As have you. The Soul Reaver, Cain's ancient blade, older than any of us and a thousand times more deadly. The legends claimed that the blade was possessed and thrived by devouring the souls of its victims. For all our bravado, we knew what it meant when Cain drew the Soul Reaver in anger. It satisfaction in Cain's eye when the Soul Reaver was destroyed. I did not understand the game that Cain was playing, but I knew the finishing move. From this moment and ever afterwards, you and this blade are inextricably bound. Soul Reaver and Reaver of Souls, your destinies are intertwined. By destroying the sword, you have liberated it from its corporeal prison and restored it to its true form, a race blade, its energy unbound. No longer a physical blade, it can only manifest itself in the material realm when your strength is fully restored. Once manifest, it will sustain you. What are you, little soul? Another of Cain's creatures come to taunt this bound spectre. I did not intend to disturb your rest. Rest. A body is needed for sleep. Flesh and bones are required to recline. No, child. All I may do is watch and remember, ceaselessly conscious as this wretched world's history unfurls. Ghastly past, insufferable future, are they one and the same? 
Am I always here? How have you come to haunt these pillars? Cain refused the sacrifice. The Pillar of Balance, corrupted to its core, stands as a monument to his blind ambition. Now these pillars serve only to bind me here, my prison and eternal home, thanks to the avarice of your master, Cain. That bastard can claim no allegiance from me. Then we share a common foe, Raziel. Return here when you have need. Ariel remembers what others have forgotten. empower you with elemental law. Each spell exacts a sacrifice of energy, however. Use them sparingly and wisely. Once a testament to mankind's defiance of Cain's empire, this towering cathedral now stood derelict. The humans who worshipped here, dead for centuries. Its architects conceived this tower as a holy weapon against the vampire menace, a colossal instrument of brass and stone. The cathedral's pipes, once tuned to blast a deadly hymn, now stood silent, and these vacant spaces whistled. They're impotent. The prodigal son. There is no returning for you, Raziel. Stefan, your visage becomes you. It's an appropriate reflection of your soul. And you are not his handsome Raziel anymore. His precious firstborn son turned betrayer. You have missed so many changes, little Raziel. Look around you. See how the human's weapon of destruction has become my home. Indeed, my body. A cocoon of brick and granite from which to watch a pupating world. 
a crevice in which to cower, only scuttling from the shadows to devour a victim already ensnared in your cowardly trap. But you've made the mistake of leaving me unbound, and it is you who must succumb to my will. Will! Instinct! Reflex action! The insect mind finds little difference. I warn you, brother. As my stature has grown, so it is matched by my appetite. Step forward, morsel. Zephon's apostate soul has bestowed on you a new gift. Like his vampire spawn, you are able to scale certain walls which are otherwise impassable, but only in the physical realm. In the spirit world, these insubstantial edifices will not support you. The ancient tomb of the Seraphim. Once impenetrably sealed, now ravaged by Nosgoth's upheavals, its mysteries lay exposed. In the time of Vorador, centuries before Cain was made, the Seraphim warrior priests waged a merciless war against the vampire tribes of Nosgoth. Emboldened by righteousness, they committed unspeakable and indiscriminate acts of violence, massacring fledglings and ancients alike. They decimated entire bloodlines in mere decades. Now their husks lay here, murdered. Take heed, Raziel. A forgotten history lies within. Know thyself, though it may destroy you. As I pulled the stone free, a sigh of sepulchral air escaped the inner chamber. I was not prepared for what lay beyond this threshold. of Seraphim saints, bearing my brother's names, and my own. The irony of Cain's blasphemous act rushed in on me with the crushing force of revelation. Were my hands not as bloody as these? Worse, I had spilled the blood of my brothers, these very comrades whose tombs lay ravaged before me. Yes, Raziel. You were Seraphon, born of the same force that all but destroyed your race. Before the dawn of the Empire, you were chosen. Cain, Nosgoth's solitary self-declared monarch, plundered this tomb and raised you from these crypts. Breathing his vampiric gift into your defiled corpses, he resurrected you as his favored sons. <laughs>
at it. You shall not pass. Such loyalty to one who has you guarding this outpost like a chained dog. Do you prosper on the scraps he casts you? Your insults will do nothing to blood the agonies of your demise. Cain killed me once. Behold the result. I have no more to fear for you. and manipulate space. As your symbiotic weapon, the Soul Reaver is also thus enhanced. You may focus and project an orb of kinetic energy to strike objects that are otherwise beyond your reach. Once a sanctuary against the vampire menace, this abbey has been drowned by the deluge spilling from this wounded land. Your brother Rahab and his brood, devastated even by the feeble rays of Nazgoth's sun, overcame their vulnerability to water and retreated from the surface. Now they haunt these ruins and glide in the darkness of its stagnant depths. This elemental forge is tuned to the Soul Reaver's energy. Once baptized in this primordial flame, the blade may be imbued with fire at any future time. Rahab, you have adapted well to your environment, for one so maladjusted. Do not mock me, Raziel. You of all of us should respect the power bestowed by a limitation overcome. Cain said you would come. You speak with the murderer? You would do well to mind your blasphemous tongue. What more did he tell you? That you would destroy me. I will indeed. But tell me, before I tear your soul from its moorings, do you know what we were before Cain spawned us? Human. Seraphan Rahab, the antithesis of all we ever believed. Does it matter? We were lost. He saved us. Saved us? From what? From ourselves. to water's touch. Immersion in water will no longer dissolve your physical body, 
enabling you to swim to areas heretofore beyond your reach. This city once teemed with the life of my kind. Could it be that other clans had suffered the same fate as mine? In his madness, could Cain spare none of his brood? It was not Cain, but Dumas' own arrogance that brought the downfall of his clan. These are human weapons, Raziel. Believing themselves invincible, Dumas and his offspring failed to see an attack coming from the least likely assailants. Complacent in their arrogance, they were taken by surprise, allowing the human vampire hunters to decimate their ranks with little resistance. The few that escaped have been reduced to scavengers. My brother Dumas, a powerful warrior in life, he would have burned with shame to have me find him here like a stuck pig. Your thanks are premature, Dumas. I have not forgotten whose hands bore me into the abyss. The centuries in limbo have honed my strength. Not even Cain is my equal. Even the strongest vampire is vulnerable. We shall test your thesis, Raziel. My bloodthirst has been superseded by an even darker hunger. I will consume your soul before this day. you to wind a constricting band of spectral energy around your enemies. This energy manifests itself in both the spectral and material realms, and in the physical world it can be employed to manipulate otherwise immovable objects. The Oracle's Cave, where Cain's first fateful meeting with Mobius occurred. Mobius played the role of a doddering soothsayer, stirring his pot of visions while dispensing enigmatic predictions to gullible visitors. Underneath the facade was Mobius the Time Streamer, sorcerer of the Circle of Nine, a ruthless manipulator with the power to bend time. Since his murder at Cain's hand centuries ago, these caves have stood vacant, though, like Mobius himself, they are rumored to be only a facade for a much larger, more elaborate complex. I sensed that Cain was here, and at that moment, I would have plumbed the depths of hell to find him. This, I deduced, must be the man himself, the time streamer, Mobius. He seemed not at all the impressive figure I had imagined from Cain's boasted exploits, and yet, even this cold image radiated a certain undeniable...
but a glimpse into the currents of time itself. deceptions. from now, or in some century yet to come. I'm disappointed in your progress. I imagined you'd be here sooner. Tell me, did it trouble you to murder your brothers? Did it trouble you when you ordered me into the abyss? No. I had faith in you. In your ability to hate. In your self-righteous indignation. Lies. You cannot have foreseen all of this. Eternity is relentless, Raziel. 
When I first stole into this chamber centuries ago, I did not fathom the true power of knowledge. To know the future, Raziel. To see its paths and streams tracing out into the infinite. As a man, I could never have contained such forbidden truths. But each of us is so much more than we once were. Gazing out across the plains of possibility, do you not feel, with all your soul, how we have become like gods? And as such, are we not indivisible? As long as a single one of us stands, we are legion. And that is why, when I must sacrifice my children to the void, I can do so with a clear heart. Very poetic, Cain. But in the end, you offer no more than a convenient rationalization for your crimes. These chambers offer insight for those patient enough to look. In your haste to find me, perhaps you have not gazed deeply enough. Our futures are predestined. Mobius foretold mine a millennium ago. We each play out the parts fate has written for us. We are compelled ineluctably down preordained paths. Free will is an illusion. I have been to the tomb of Seraphan Cain. Your dirty secret is exposed. How could you transform a Seraphan priest into a vampire? How could I not? One must keep his friends close, Raziel, and his enemies even closer. Can you grasp the absurd beauty of the paradox? We are the same. Seraphim and Vampire. With our holy wars, our obsession with Nosgoth's domination, who better to serve me than those whose passion transcends all notions of good and evil? I will not applaud your clever blasphemy. The Seraphim were saviors, defending Nosgoth from the corruption that we represent. My eyes are opened, Cain. I find no nobility in the unlife you rudely forced on my unwilling corpse. You may have uncovered your past, but you know nothing of it. You think the Seraphim were noble? Altruistic? <laughs> Don't be simple. Their agenda was the same as ours. You are lost in a maze of moral relativism, Cain. These apparitions and portents. What game are you playing now? Destiny is a game, is it not? And now, you await my latest move. This is not where, or how, it ends. Fate promises more twists before this drama unfolds completely. <laughs> Be warned, Raziel. Once you cross this threshold, you are beyond my influence. Raziel, Redeemer and Destroyer, Pawn and Messiah, welcome, time span soul. Welcome to your destiny. Where time is but a loop, a loose stitch in the universal cloth. 
A streamer might seize upon a chance, a fatal slip, and plunge the fate of planets into chaos.